Hello and welcome to the first installment of Sterosol's Dental Water webinar series, your go-to source for all things water lines. My name is Jared Mendolia. I am the marketing coordinator here at Sterosol. I have been working in the dental water line business for almost five years now. I have written a number of different articles for the various trade publications out there. Uh, really what I enjoy is taking the extremely complex, uh, as with you know, a lot of things in science, uh, things can get very complex, and trying to whittle them down into something that's highly usable. So uh, today on this episode, we are talking about the COVID-19 shutdown, how to maintain your dental unit water lines during the shutdown, and everything that you're going to need to reopen your clinic. Some of the key concepts that we're gonna go through, uh, can the coronavirus be transmitted through water? What does the shutdown mean for your water lines? How to properly prep your water lines for the shutdown? And important steps when reopening your clinics. The first question we've been getting a lot of, can the coronavirus be transmitted through dental water lines? Uh, really as reality sets in here nearly a month into this quarantine we've been thinking a lot about getting dentists back into the uh, into the operatories and so this question has been coming up more than a lot of the other ones uh, so what we know is that there are no studies really that's a big problem without the studies it, it's really difficult to say what you should do given certain circumstances so what we do know is that we have found some traces of coronavirus in the public wastewater. And what that tells us is that there is the potential for coronavirus to exist in, in water. But again, there have been no direct studies of viruses for that matter, let alone uh, one that's so specific like the coronavirus that's causing the current COVID-19 pandemic. So really until that information comes out you're probably not going to see a lot of information based on research you're going to see a lot of folks out there with because we don't know you should do this right so uh, until we have more information uh, it's it's going to be really just kind of trying to deal with the things that we do know about Right, so some of the concerns that a lot of folks have had that we recognize as the retra retraction of contaminated biological material and the uh, subsequent aerosols that are generated from that contaminated dental water. So if you have patients that are uh, potentially retracting uh, or were getting retracted biological material into the dental chairs, that could then be a point of spread through aerosols and spatter from high-speed hand pieces and air water syringes. So it's really important to just think about these things as justification for ongoing waterline treatment efforts, right? It definitely cannot hurt to stay on your P's and Q's when it comes to your waterline treatment. Uh, and I have a particular study in mind from the American Journal of the, or the Journal of the American Dental Association uh, in an article written by Dr. John Molinari, who's a well-known expert on waterline contamination. Uh, he had stated in that, in that article that dental aerosols and droplets can remain in the air for up to 30 minutes. So again, the, that not only affects your uh, practitioners and your patients, but also the office staff who may be in the, in the near vicinity uh, of those operatories that are in use. So what does the shutdown mean for ongoing waterline treatment? Well, you know, now that we're all thoroughly freaked out knowing about aerosols and spatter, what, is, what does this mean for the ongoing treatment of dental water lines as we go into the shutdown? Or for some of you, you may already have been shut down. Did you do all the right stuff? Uh, so we know that practices are shut down and really uh, what does this mean in terms of water line treatment? So we know that shutting down for an extended period of time leaves you with stagnant water in your dental units. And we know that stagnant water leads to bacterial growth. 
And we know a whole bunch of bad stuff can come from bacterial growth. You need only look to the Orange County, California outbreak of mycobacterium in the Jonesboro, Georgia outbreak of mycobacterium abscessus. These were uh, two horrible outbreaks that we definitely do not want to let happen during a pandemic. So as most of you know, bacteria can grow exponentially to levels greater than 500 CFU in 24 hours or less without continuous treatment, right? So just keep that in mind as we go through the, the next few weeks uh, as we think about what we're doing in terms of the waterline treatment. And so what, what have and what do the regulators and experts recommend as far as waterline treatment goes? So the CDC recommends that for routine procedures, use water that meets the less than or equal to 500 CFU per milliliter EPA standard for drinking water. Consult with your dental unit manufacturer for the appropriate methods and equipment to maintain dental unit water quality. Follow the waterline treatment or the dental unit, dental unit manufacturer's recommendations for monitoring water quality, right? So that would be your testing regimens and use sterile saline or sterile water as a coolant when performing surgical procedures. That one is especially important in knowing and understanding what that line looks like as you go into a procedure. When do you pull out the pipette with the sterile saline? The Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention recommends that you follow the CDC recommendations, right? No surprise there. Stay informed on waterline treatment techniques. Review the instructions for use for the dental unit and the waterline treatment products that you're currently using with it. Flush the water lines for 20 to 30 seconds between patients and at the beginning and end of the day. A lot of municipalities already have this one in place. So for some of you, that's nothing new. For, for those of you that don't, uh, this is a absolutely essential uh, in just continuing to prevent the stagnation of water in the dental chair. Next, you want to monitor and document dental water quality per the device or germicidal product manufacturer's recommendations, right? So some products actually have a requirement under their labeling to assess some stated metric. Um, others don't. So just make sure you're, you're on top of those IFUs and that you're monitoring at the intervals that the manufacturers are recommending. Use sterile solutions for surgical procedures. Develop and implement procedures for maintaining, monitoring, and documenting dental water quality, right? So uh, this is, again, kind of going back to what are those manufacturers recommending? Uh, if there is no manufacturer's recommendation, um, you know, look to your waterline products. Uh, you can always default back to the CDC or the OSAP recommendations at large. If you go to their websites, they have all that information for you. Uh, and then lastly, of course, educate your team, right? Uh, you are only as strong as your weakest link, and so making sure that everybody is prepped and ready to deal with these issues. So how do you prep your water lines for an extended shutdown as we're dealing with right now uh, during the COVID pandemic? Under normal circumstances, continuous treatment is more than adequate. What we're trying to mitigate is the stagnation of water in the chair and the subsequent drop off of the active ingredient levels as the chair sits, right? So it's like your engine in your car. If you have water in your lines, we, we liken that to the engine running, right? With continuous treatment, we put the car in drive and move in the right direction, but without residual treatment, it's like putting the car in reverse and driving away from your destination. So we wanna ensure that we're going in the direction that we intend to go, rather than inadvertently throwing the car into reverse and driving away from uh, a state of compliance, if you will. So how do you prep the water lines? Uh, first, you're gonna check on your maintenance product. The reason we throw this out there first is that a lot of products have a functional lifespan uh, most of them, I'm talking to you strong cartridge customers out there, a lot of them are defined as, you know, usually as a year from the date of installation. So make sure that you check your products IFUs, ensure that your products are uh, not in jeopardy of expiring during the pandemic. We have been recommending that if you have less than three months of good life left in your maintenance product, you should probably be thinking about reordering that product now. 
um, because a lot of a lot of supply lines have been disrupted during this whole thing, and so we don't know to what extent you may have difficulty obtaining these products as as time goes on. So we just want to make sure that you're set up and that you don't have a lapse in treatment um, during this whole time. Next question to ask yourself is, are you planning to see emergency cases? I know a lot of cl clinicians who are keeping a few ops in reserve, keeping them ready, having staff on hand who can answer the call if an emergency case pops up. Uh, we have specific recommendations to deal with that. And, and essentially what you're, what you're trying to do is prevent those dental units from going stagnant. So making sure that you're running hand pieces at least uh, two minutes in a seven day period. That prevents the stagnation and makes and ensures that the active ingredient levels stay where they need to be to prevent bacterial growth. Next question is, do you have any shock treatments ready? This is extremely important because you're not only going to need shock if you're keeping ops open for an emergency cases and there were a la there was a lapse in protocol or some kind of deviation that would uh, warrant you intervening with a shock treatment to get everything back on track, but also you're going to need shock as you look to coming back and reopening full time for regular procedures. So make make sure you have some shock on hand. For those chairs that you are not going to leave in reserve for emergency cases, we are recommending that you empty the bottles and air dry your lines. Uh, this ensures that there is, no, there is no bacterial growth once those active ingredient levels fall off after a long period of stagnation. And this is the best way that, that we can advise you guys to prevent that from happening in your clinic. Um, some of you folks out there don't have bottles, so you have direct feed chairs, which are supplied directly from the municipal supply. So what we've been recommending is to run all lines for two minutes in a, in a seven day period. This just ensures that those active ingredient levels do not fall off and that continuous treatment is maintained. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at 719-622-7200. You can also email uh, the support team at support at .com, and we'd be happy to field any of those questions. On that note, you know, best practice, even if, you're, if your office is fully active and running full steam ahead, if you have chairs that are sitting unused for long periods of time, let's say you've got a, uh, a hygienist who comes in once in a while, or maybe they're out sick, and that chair has sat for the whole week, task someone with keeping track of that or at least have an awareness of what chairs are being used and make sure they run those hand pieces for at least two minutes in a seven day cycle. So what steps should you take to ensure compliant dental water as you reopen your clinic? Well, you know, we talked about uh, shocking previously. So having that shock on hand is going to ensure that your uh, water line treatment gets off the ground in the right direction immediately, right? Then you're going to resume your continuous treatment as you normally would uh, now that you've had a good shock treatment. And then, of course, you're going to review those IFUs to make sure that your um, everything that you're doing is still on label and that all of your staff know their part. Because, again, if you have someone who's uh, not following the IFUs, it's going to undo all the efforts of everybody, right? Products are, products are only as effective uh, as they're advertised if you follow the IFUs. So that's absolutely essential. And on that note, we, we would not be doing our job here in the marketing department at Stericill if we didn't uh, pitch a shameless plug for our wonderful waterline products. Um, we are the only company currently offering a complete line of waterline treatment products, regardless of what your your operatory water delivery configurations are, we have a product for you. Uh, we have a team of waterline experts all across the country who can uh, implement these products you know, very effectively. Um, all sterosol products feature the same great less than or equal to 10 colony forming units per milliliter. That is the industry standard. That is the current lowest, uh, um, current lowest 
quantified claim that the EPA has given out and all of our products have that claim. Uh, of course, all sterosol products feature a shock treatment, uh, either built in or bought separately. So no matter what, you don't have to go out and purchase another shock treatment that may or may not be compatible with your maintenance treatment. Uh, and of course, thanks to the non-toxic, non-oxidizing silver ions that we use in all of our products, all of these products are safe for patients, staff, and equipment. That includes shock treatments as well. So if you have any questions, again, give us a call or send us an email. We can get a sales uh, representative in contact with you ASAP. So the final important step uh, as you reopen your practice is, of course, to test your water for bacteria. This is the, the only way that you will know if a dental water line cleaning regimen is effective. Um, this is, of course, not us saying this. This is the American Dental Association. So by all means, go out there. If you have never tested your water, it's really easy. There are lots of dental services out there, um, water line testing services that can help you out. Uh, when we recommend water testing, it's, on, it's always with the Genix Labs. Uh, we like Agenix Labs just because their water testing procedure provides a wealth of information that is very effective in helping you um, get an idea of what's going on in the water line chemically. If you have a water test failure, the more information you can have, the better. All right? So it's, it's as simple as order a test, your results are coming back in seven to 10 business days, and you have confirmation as to whether or not your water is, com is compliant. So. Uh, reach out to Agenix Labs. You can, you can find them at agenix.net is their website, A-G-E-N-I-C-S dot net. So for a limited time now, uh, thanks for sitting through this webinar all the way to the end. Uh, we have a special offer uh, to request a free box of Citrusil Tablet Shock, our best-selling shock tablet. Um, you can go to sterosil.com forward slash Citrusil dash shock and claim your free box. So again, um, that's a free box of Citrusil tablet shock. You're definitely going to need it right now. So get out there. Thanks for watching. Um, for more information, feel free to go to sterosil.com forward slash COVID dash 19. Uh, we have a whole bunch of flyers and specific uh, COVID related stuff on there, resources, what have you. Um, everything that you're going to need COVID related and dental waterline, you can find it there. Uh, subscribe to the Sterosol Waterline blog. Uh, I, I do write all those articles and we do a really good job in researching and vetting all the information. We are a science and engineering company. And so we resonate with that, that idea of research and references and everything that we put in there is not just us saying that, it's what we have found the experts are saying and recommending. So check it out. Um, if you go to sterosol.com in the upper right hand corner, there's the blog tab. Click on it. You can subscribe there. We don't use your information to spam you. Uh, we just send you notifications as to when the next uh, blog article was published. So and then of course, don't forget, get your free box of Citrusil Shock. Go to sterosol.com forward slash Citrusil dash shock and claim your box today. Well, that's it, folks. Um, more episodes to come. Uh, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. If you. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call at 719-622-7200 or email at support at That's it for now. Thanks for watching.